Okay, so before we begin, I just want to quickly say that at the end of this review, after I've given my rating, I'm going to go into major spoilers, but before then, you're safe. Death Sentence is an action thriller directed by James Wan. Please don't turn off the review when I give the synopsis. Kevin Bacon plays an everyday man who takes the law into his own hands after his son gets murdered as part of a gang initiation rite. Yeah, I know, it sounds so generic, but it's far greater than it sounds. You see, I'm not usually into these action revenge flicks. We've seen it all before, and it mostly bores me. I only gave this a try because James Wan and Kevin Bacon were attached to it, and I didn't get what I expected. Not only is it one of James Wan's best films, but it's easily my favorite Kevin Bacon performance. So the main reason why I think Death Sentence is overlooked is because it humanizes what vengeance flicks typically glorify, especially the ones with action scenes. A death at the start is usually just a plot device to justify a load of action scenes. But here, the son's death is actually felt throughout the whole film, and the acting surrounding that death is soul crushing. It's really well done. And yes, there are action scenes, but don't go thinking that this is a pure action film. There aren't many gunfights, there's not really any hand-to-hand -hand combat, blocking and dodging, slow motion effects, gun fu. It's mostly tension based, and I assure you, the violence is not glorified. I simply do not have any fun with the action, and that's due to Kevin Bacon's character. He's so vulnerable, so human, and that's because he is not an action hero. This character is so normal, he is almost boring. He's never held a gun before, he doesn't know how to fight, let alone kill. His scenario is so relatable, it isn't difficult to imagine it happening to you. And that makes the action scenes kind of depressing and scary. When Bacon transforms into something violent, you never get the sense that he's discovered himself, found out who he's meant to be. Watching this vulnerable, hurt man slip into darkness is distressing for me. I actually feel loss during the action scenes. When the villains act smug, I'm angry and I want Bacon to hurt them, but when he does hurt them, I feel like shit. I understand that the bad guys must be stopped, but I hate seeing it come at a cost to him. So no, I don't think the violence is glorified here, nor fun. This story really got to me guys. It's so simple, the structure isn't anything new, but the humanization of it all just did it for me as did Bacon's performance. Guys, Kevin Bacon completely crushed it in this role. In my eyes, easily his best performance. I've been a big fan of Death Sentence for 10 years now, and I've only just noticed that Bacon brings a new performance to almost every scene. It's not as simple as happy man gets traumatized and then he gets mad. There's so much inner conflict. I love his denial as hell unfolds around him his poker face after committing his first murder. It's a layered performance, one of those roles where Bacon says a lot with just his eyes. And the cinematography is also incredible. The color slowly drains throughout the film, perfectly conveying Bacon's hopelessness. And when the action kicks in later on, there are these great stunts and awesome camera work. There are some wonderful long shot takes that keep the blood pumping, and it's got this great documentary-esque vibe with the shaky cam. I love it. The only problem I had with the look was the editing during the start of the chase scene. It's a bit too choppy and it zooms in for no reason, but it's only 10 seconds, so who cares? And the soundtrack is also strong. There's no fun rock music playing here, guys. This soundtrack is painful. This is one of those films where sometimes all sound drowns out and the music takes over, accentuating the trauma. And during most of the action, they remove the music entirely, leaving us with the gritty sounds of gunshots, blood, and screams. And again, it's rarely pleasant and does the job very well. However, that sentence is not a masterpiece. I wish we got to know more of the characters. A lot of the villains were just nameless faces with little dialogue. John Goodman was amazing, but he only gets three scenes. And I wish I saw more of Bacon interacting with his family. 
and more of his family affected by loss. Some of the characters also do some really stupid things. The bad guys start shooting in public in broad daylight with no masks. And not long after, one of them directly confronts Bacon where he works and threatens him. Really? In a building full of witnesses, security guards and cameras? What, are they begging to get arrested? And Bacon himself makes some dumb moves. He goes back to work with their weapons, even though the gang clearly knows he works there. And when he goes after the gang, he actually lets them know that he's on his way, coming for them. They're the experienced killers, not him. So I'd expect him to use a more stealthy approach, like an untrained killer would. As a result, he goes in guns blazing. And although the action is gripping, it's a little bit corny and almost feels like it's finally glorifying violence. Plus, you have to accept that some of the villains ain't like stormtroopers, and Bacon is sometimes, somehow, a crack shot. And speaking of conveniences during the action scenes, Death Sentence's biggest issue is Kevin Bacon's reflexes. Take this scene for example. He's walking down the street and has no idea that the gang are after him. What does he have, spidey senses? This type of thing actually happens a few times, and it sadly makes him feel like an action hero, contradicting the relatable themes that I fell in love with. I really don't like that, and a lot of these issues could have been avoided easily. As a result, I don't see Death Sentence as the classic I want to, but I still love this film so much. It's not perfect but I think it's a hell of a lot better than the OK reviews it got upon release. I truly believe that Death Sentence leaves a blueprint behind that most action and revenge films hoping to be taken seriously should follow. It doesn't glorify violence, vengeance, nor vigilantism. It's gripping, doesn't sequel bait because it tells a strong enough story on its own, and it has an incredibly layered lead performance by Bacon. And for giving me such a powerful ride and breathing life into a plot that kind of bores me, I'm going to give Death Sentence an 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> but I do have to admit this, guys. My strong appreciation for this film might be based on novelty. This is the first time I've ever truly loved the film this genre, so if you're already into this type of plot, maybe you won't appreciate it like me. But I recommend it either way. It's so much better than it should have been. Okay, so now it's time to get into major spoilers here. You've been warned. Later on, Bacon is revealed to have a load of savings for his dead son's college fund. But nearing the climax, he uses that money to illegally buy guns in order to kill his son's murderers. And of course, there's poetic irony there, but it's pretty fucking painful. And it also leads to, quite possibly, my favorite gun purchase scene ever. Bacon is a fish out of water here pretty much standing at the gates of hell, and there's John Goodman welcoming him in. And Goodman just hijacks this scene, man. His exuberance when selling the guns. Lots of fucking bullets. You got the bastard of bastards. That's a sweetie. That's a fucking hungry man right there. Followed by his apathy when receiving two extra grand. That's three fucking grand worth of killing. You got three grand worth of killing to do? There's five. Well, that makes you a preferred customer. It's like he's so numb to this life. I also love how Bacon just gave this criminal an extra two grand because he's entered a world where money has lost its meaning. Guys, look at those eyes. I've never seen Bacon like this before. And now I've got to talk about the finale. When it comes to finally killing off the main antagonist, most revenge flicks encourage schadenfreude, which is fine. I love seeing the bad guy lose and suffer like anyone. But Death Sentence doesn't exactly go down that path. Sorry to repeat myself, but it humanizes it. When the villain loses, just by pointing out Bacon's appearance, he reveals the hold he has on him. Look at you. You look like one of us. Look what I made you. And instead of a witty one-liner before killing the baddie, he almost talks to him like a person. Ready? Great sad music plays, the villain starts to cry, which 
almost makes me feel, dare I say, sorry for him, considering his background. And in another ballsy move, his death is off screen, running risk of pissing off action fans. And there's no catharsis here, and whether Bacon lives or dies, he hasn't won anything. And for me, that's a fitting end note to this great film. When the credits go up, I just sit there in silence reflecting. Revenge action flicks just don't tend to have that effect on me. And that's one of the many reasons why I think Death Sentence is special. Thanks for watching, guys. Give me a like, give me a sub, and remember, the badger appreciates you.